search now. Welcome back Hello. to Research Now Live. Trouble makers. We have a big finale. We have Liz Huzeric from Warner Brothers, SVP Media, joining us. Thank you for Hi, joining Hi, thank you. So, 22 years at Warner Brothers, and now you're uh... <laughs> <laughs> Don't say that out loud. <laughs> Research and insights, what does your day involve? What are you doing for Warner Brothers? Um, well, we're a corporate team, so um, we have 35 people, yeah. about 30 in Burbank and another five or six here in uh, New York. And uh, as a corporate team, we handle all research for the studio-wide television division. So it. it's, a, it's a pretty expansive uh, team, and we get our hands in a lot of interesting things. Yeah, I bet. So how do you see research impacting um, the Warner Brothers team in the next two to five years? You know, research is an interesting thing and it continues to grow and evolve mm -hmm. and we, we study the consumers really closely and about five years ago we started hearing they wanted control and they wanted choice and as technology gave them that freedom, we continue to see them asking for more. So we're kind of trying to embark on those models, those business models in terms of windowing product and in terms of... Um, informing management so it's really it's kind of understanding what's driving the consumer and then building our business models around it and research is hand in hand with with the leaders of our company yeah absolutely so you've probably seen some interesting changes in consumer behavior can you comment on any that you've seen either at this conference or in the past year um, I think behavior's been evolving over the last 20 years I mean I know it's been rapidly um, maybe more top of mind and maybe accelerated over the past several years, but um, you know, we've seen change for years and again now it's just that choice and control and it's more about the human touch and making things easier. Yeah. So like when your mom started using Facebook or my mom or yeah. you know And I refused oh, to friend her. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> or like my staff said no to yeah. me. <laughs> then you're know, like, okay, things are changing and you know, um, the way we serve content yeah. is changing. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I'm sure you've had a lot of people pitch and you've been client side and let's talk about winning business. Do you have some tips on, that you can share for winning new business? So it, um, it's sort of now we're taking that choice and control to empowering our clients and our advertisers, people who work with us. So it started with, uh, we built a lab in Burbank and Bruce, my colleague who's here, kind of shepherded this lab and that was for talent and producers in Burbank. But then we really thought it through and it was like, okay, we have to have a lab for our partners on Madison Avenue so they can come in and test and understand how consumers are engaging with their message. So we just launched or opened the lab and this was a lab that was like developed through Yesterday's spe luncheon speaker talked about grit. Through Bruce's grit, um, it was like a multi um, business um, collaboration right. across Warner Brothers, HBO, Turner, and Time Inc. And we have this beautiful facility in the Time Warner Center, which is a state of the art media lab yeah. that we bring our partners in and we can test anything. We can uh, test eye tracking, we have two focus group facilities, we do biometrics testing. Nice. So it's really a great facility. But on top of that, we think we also have to be brave enough to be truthful when we're doing studies, right? So right. not every study is going to reveal exactly what you want. Totally. So yeah. you have to be brave enough to say, okay, maybe this isn't working, this context isn't working, yeah. and go back to the drawing board or, or work with your partners to yeah. edit and, um, and try it again. So the collaboration with partners and to grow the business is A, with our lab, we're trying to offer more, and then B, really being brave enough to be brutally honest. Yeah, yeah, I think that's important. Um, so in the business, lots of buzzwords. What's uh, one of the most annoying for you? What really gets to you? Like the one thing that gets to me more than ever, <laughs> and I see it like when I come 
to conferences is like, well, in my household, or in my family, or my kids do this. And it's like, you know what? We are so not typical. Yeah. You know, like, everyone I work with has every device known to man. We're testing. And so to, say, to refer to ourselves is a really, I think, risky move. Yeah. So I think we have to be careful and, and separate our behavior and how we're engaging with content with the general public. And I, I know a lot of people, a lot of researchers in the business have bosses who's every time their daughter or son goes to school, they never watch TV again. Well, you know, that's not true. So right. it, it's a very dangerous slope and, you know, that's kind of like a pet peeve of mine. Right. That and cord cutting. I don't hear that term again. I'd be so happy. Cord cutting. Uh, yeah, that's the second time we've had cord cutting on the stage too. It's just so. It it just you know, the stats aren't really there. It was more of an economic issue, yeah. and now we see consumers you know signing back on. And every time you read about it, and it just sets management in motion. So instead of being proactive. I think research teams across the country or across you know companies are putting that fire out. Like, what does right. it mean? What does it mean? And it's just one of those things where you're chasing your tail. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, so let's switch gears a little bit. Um, do you tweet? I know you have. We found I, two Twitter accounts for you. I know <laughs> those are department accounts, not mine personally. I. I I read, I'm like more of the uh, voyeur. voyeur. Okay, so if there was, um, what's one of the most, the funniest or most impactful tweets or Facebook posts that you've seen? Right, in the past? so I think my most impactful Facebook moment was maybe about four years ago now. I, I was, it was like my 45th birthday and I was like panicked, you know, because I was starting down that slope and, um, <laughs> It was chilling, really. Yeah. And then when I went on my Facebook page and I saw all these birthday wishes and these well wishes, it was the first time I had the emotional connection with Facebook personally. Right. It like lifted me up and I forgot all about the number. And because prior to that, I had been like kind of actively on Facebook, but more again, as a voyeur, yeah. I wasn't really partaking or feeling that emotional, yeah, that yeah, human yeah. connection. That was the first time. And I really, then I got it. I got all right, I get it now. Yeah, and yeah, that was yeah. like an aha moment. Did it make you post more and do more? It did. Facebook? I became yeah. more active. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. So I better get a lot of posts next year at the Big 5-0 <laughs> I'll probably, <laughs> you'll read about me somewhere. <laughs> well, that was, thank you so much for your thank time. You. So everyone, don't forget to post on Liz Huzarek's Facebook for 50th birthday. <laughs> yes, you'll see it there. <laughs> I want thank to give you, you a thank you gift for taking oh, time out so for much. us. Thank you. That is the, that's the end of Research Now Live. Thank you all for joining us.